In this episode, I'll be focusing on one of the great voices to emerge from the British R&B scene of the 1960s, that of the soulful blues singer Chris Farlow. London-born Farlow, whose birth name was John Henry Dayton, formed a skiffle band, the John Henry Group, inspired by Lonnie Donegan in the late 1950s, and then joined the R&B outfit The Thunderbirds in 1959, who cut five singles for the Columbia label from 1963 to 1965, billed as Chris Farlow and The Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds lineup included the guitarist Albert Lee, pianist Dave Greenslade, and the drummer Carl Palmer. Their only LP for Columbia was this self-titled album, released in February 1966, but it contained several tracks recorded in 1963 and 4, complemented by some brand new recordings. The album comprises traditional rock and roll and blues, with tracks such as Hound Dog, Reeling and Rockin', and T-Bone Walker's Stormy Monday Blues, which Farlow had recorded for Island Sioux label, under the pseudonym Little Joe Cook. Chris Farlow had been performing on the live circuit for years before this LP was released, and in that time he had gained the admiration of famous contemporaries such as Paul McCartney, Eric Burden and Spencer Davis, as mentioned in the sleeve notes. Chris Farlow and the Thunderbirds was released in mono only on the Columbia label with the catalogue number SX6034. The blue and black uh, label design features the notice sold in the UK subject to resale price conditions and the rim text states the Gramophone Company Limited as well as the all rights reserved notice. There is no tax code. The inner sleeve is a die cut paper type printed with the use Emitex cleaning cloth uh, wording and it comes with a tracing paper liner. The LP cover is a front laminated flip back type. It states patents pending on the bottom flip back and is printed and made in England by Garrod and Lofthouse Limited. The back cover also carries the Columbia Records logo with the gramophone company trademark. The spine lists the LP title only. This is a pretty desirable record and is valued in the rare record price guide at £150. Although critical acclaim for the Thunderbirds was widespread, commercial sales were limited. By 1965, Farlow was hanging out at the fashionable Flamingo Club in Wardour Street, Soho, and his musical style had become more mod and soul influenced. He came to the attention of the Rolling Stones manager Andrew Lou Goldham, who had just started a new label uh, called Immediate Records and was moving into music production. He was a huge fan of Farlow's voice and he signed him to Immediate Records and chart success soon followed. Farlow recorded 11 singles for the Immediate label, five of which were covers of Rolling Stones songs including Paint It Black, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, and out of time. Produced by Mick Jagger, Farlow's version was number one in the charts on the day England won the 1966 World Cup final. Chris Farlow's first album for Immediate was 14 Things to Think About and included covers of Think by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, It's All Over Now Baby Blue written by Bob Dylan, My Girl Josephine written by Fats Domino and Yesterday by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. The album was produced by Andrew Lug Oldham and the Rolling Stones engineer Glyn Johns. 14 Things to Think About was released in mono only on the lilac coloured immediate label with the catalogue number IMLP005, so it was just number 5 in their catalogue. The rim text states manufactured and distributed by Philips Records Limited and also includes an all rights reserved notice. The inner bag is a die cut plain paper sleeve with a polythene liner. The LP cover is a front laminated flip back type and the manufacturer is not credited. The spine displays the album title, the artist name and the catalogue number but no mention of the record company name. The album is fairly elusive today and mint copies are currently valued at £75. Chris Farlow followed this LP up quite quickly and his next album for Immediate came in 1966 and was now produced entirely by Mick Jagger and included four Rolling Stones covers including I'm Free, 
and Ride On Baby, which reached the UK Top 40 as a single in late 1966. The art of Chris Farlow also included more soulful material, such as the Four Tops number one single Reach Out I'll Be There and Otis Redding's I've Been Loving You Too Long, which was a favourite of producer Mick Jagger, who had recorded the first ever cover of that song with the Rolling Stones on their LP Got Live If You Want It. Despite Chris Farlow's success as a solo artist, his two LPs for Immediate thus far had failed to make the album charts. So his next LP was a compilation called The Best of Chris Farlow, and his final immediate LP was The Last Goodbye in 1969, neither of which charted. Uh, strange given that Farlow uh, was still having moderately successful singles, such as Handbags and Glad Rags, written by Mike Darbo of Manfred Mann, and his recording of My Way of Giving, which was penned by the small faces Steve Marriott and Ronnie Lane, who also played on Farlow's version and were also signed to Immediate Records at the time. His recording of Handbags and Glad Rags also appears on the Immediate compilation Immediate Lets You In, where he is described as having a unique vocal ability and is billed alongside the likes of Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page, The Small Faces and John Mayall's Blues Breakers. Immediate Lets You In is on the pink Immediate label with the catalogue number IMLYIN1. It carries the text sold in the UK subject to resale price conditions and the rim text includes an all rights reserved notice. This one comes in a plain non die cut paper liner with the patent supplied for wording and the made in Great Britain text. The LP cover is a front laminated flip back type with no mention of the printer. The spine displays the record company name, the album title and the catalogue number. Uh, this one is valued at £20. Farlow had no more solo chart singles in the 1960s or 70s, but enjoyed a very credible artistic period with the jazz rock pioneers Coliseum, whose LPs, recorded for the Vertigo label in particular, are now highly collectible. After this, Farlow joined Atomic Rooster in 1972. Atomic Rooster had recently parted company with Farlow's former Thunderbirds bandmate, drummer Carl Palmer, who had just gone off to join or form the supergroup Emerson, Lake and Palmer. This concludes my rundown of Chris Farlow's 1960s recordings and releases. That's your lot for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did like the video, please make sure you subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.